everyone, and welcome to Deck Building Derezzed. I'm your host, Code Marvelous, and today I'm joined by Stephen Ball of The Source Podcast. Hi, Dan. Thank you very much for coming on, Stephen. Oh, thank you for having me. So, Stephen, you run a podcast called The Source. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your Netrunner journey and uh, how you started that podcast and uh, a little bit more about what led you to make this deck? Okay, well, um, a few years ago, me and uh, Brooks Hamer, who's also on The Source, uh, we were working together, we were friends, and uh, well, we still are, and um, we got, we were playing a lot of board games, and we were looking at Board Game Geek, and he was very interested in the idea of playing Android Netrunner, so uh, he picked it up, and we started playing, and I hated it, I could not, un- I could not understand it, I was just like, I just couldn't wrap my head around it. I don't talk about it. Like, I don't want to play Netrunner. I don't want to play it. And uh, and then, but I kept having that like kind of itch, where it's just like, you know, it seems like it should be a good game. It's right, probably you want, you want to be good at it. It's like it's probably you, Stephen, <laughs> which which I have to tell myself constantly. Uh, and so I ended up picking it up. I was placing an order from Cool Stuff, and I had, I was like I was like if I spend another thirty five dollars, I can get free shipping. So what should I get? And I was like, you know what? I'm going to get Netrunner, and I'm going to get Creation and Control. Cool. And uh, just started, you know, like reading more into it, playing it more. We would, we would like work until two in the morning, and then we would finish up and play Netrunner for like an hour and a half. And awesome. uh, and so we were just doing it like all the time. Uh, another person that we worked with started getting into it, and we just started playing more and more often. Uh, there's not a big meta where we are, though. We talk about it on the podcast a lot. Um, so unfortunately, we don't get to play with a lot of people. And then we decided, you know what, let's, let's take the trip to Florida Regionals. This was last year's. And we went, and uh, both him and I made the top, uh, top eight. Awesome. Kind of, I don't know. Where, uh, and there in the top four, I was eliminated by uh, V. Herman, who is the third member of the source. And we became friends. And uh, shortly after, we were just like, you guys want to just do a podcast? Because I know that we have a lot of fun talking about the game. And... Uh, we like listening to podcasts, and it's like, hey, why don't we give it a shot? That's fantastic. So, everybody, uh, you can find The Source. You guys are on iTunes and a bunch of other. You can just basically put The Source Netrunner into Google, and it'll come up right on the front page. Check it out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter at A&R The Source. Uh, we're also on Facebook and stuff as A&R The Source. So, uh, and we like to, you know, just have some – we like to talk to the – talk to the people who follow us on Twitter and stuff. It's just a lot of fun. We just, we just like to, we don't like to take ourselves too seriously. Well, that's probably for the best. We are all playing a game together. It's about having fun. (laughs) Absolutely. So so Steven, tell me a little bit about Max and this Max deck. Because we were talking a little bit before and online about how this build, you're really trying to um, maintain the viability of Max. Max was very popular maybe nine months ago, a year ago. And she's kind of dropped off in popularity. There's a couple people like you and Dean who, you know, really put in the work. But talk to me a little bit about what this archetype's all about. Okay, well, this was... uh, There was always kind of like the different camps of Max. Like, when she first came out, everybody instantly went to the siphons, you know, the Eater Siphon decks like that, uh, which are, obviously, they're good. Like, they're they're really nasty to play against. And uh, then Apocalypse Max eventually was a big thing. But this is more just the, uh, I guess, uh, this is just like the Reg Max style, uh, which is just, you know, Max with normal breakers, normal just events. You know, try to get get into servers and not just try to siphon your opponent down, but... You this know, is normal. This is normal Netrunner Max. Yeah, normal Netrunner Max. This is uh, get credits, run <laughs> servers. Yeah, kind of do stuff. And like, honestly, it feels sometimes it feels like a like a shaperish type of thing, where it's okay. like you know you have your max ability. I think that uh, Max has arguably one of the most straight up powerful abilities in the game. Uh, just the free card draw and the discards really you find all of your pieces really fast, generally. Sometimes you get unlucky and they're all still at the bottom of your deck. But uh, you can really leverage the max ability uh, to find the pieces that you need at that exact moment in time. Like, you know, Shapers are so famous for their tutoring and stuff. Um, Well, and max really leverages what uh, is uh, 
an anarch idea originally, which is the idea of using your heap as your hand, as an extension of your grip. Yeah, uh, discard pile of recursion, it feels like in any game, is a really powerful tool. Um, right. To say, like, and obviously I really love it. It's uh, my corp of choice is HB, who is pretty good at very, recurring things. Yeah, very hear. known for recurring things. Uh, and I love Anarchs. In, in other games, I love uh, discard pile of recursion. It's one of the most powerful things you can do in right. a game. Because generally, you know, drawing cards is great, but being able to pick things out of your discard pile at your choice is even better. I agree with that wholeheartedly. So if we're going to talk about this build, which is more of a reg build, I think we have to start with the breaker suite because it, it, that is the main difference from a lot of other max builds. We have two corroders, which, you know, it's, I think it's, it's kind of flip-flopping going back and forth, whether or not people think corroders is uh, great or like just good. I think currently with the a lot of Wayland crap going around, I think Corroder gets a little better. Yeah, it gets a lot better. I think like um, you don't want to deal with a lot of the, a lot of these stupid things with with anything else like these spider webs and hives and stuff like that. You uh, like Corroder is still taxing, but you know what? I have the copy of Knifed, and you can recur it and stuff. You just it'll get you where you need to get. Right. That's that's the important thing with Corroder. Right. And we've got a Singleton Faust, because I hear Faust is pretty good. Yeah, Faust is is obviously... I was about to be like, Faust is good. It's like, yeah, Faust is great. But this deck, you really never want to install your copy of Faust. Um, so you it's more like an emergency, emergency Faust? Yeah, I say, uh, it's basically like a uh, break during emergencies, <laughs> pull out Faust. Yeah. Uh, Sometimes you haven't found your right piece, even as Max, and you really need to get in somebody somewhere. Uh, and Faust is my only answer to uh, Lotus Field. So you just hope that you don't see a Lotus Field, because the problem is, unlike a lot of other decks that use Faust, even though you get the free card draw, a lot of your cards in this deck are... Um, things you want to play. Things you want to play. So... You don't have a lot of redundancy. Like, you have the extra turntable, extra Katie Jones, extra breakers. But honestly, Max gets rid of a lot of those anyway. Right, because so, you're, you're throwing away two things a turn. Yeah, so you're on a clock, and Faust just increases that. Uh, I almost never install this Faust. I had to install it the other day to win a game because somebody had one of those... Uh, it's the that Navi Mumbai City Grid. Yeah. On HQ, and I knew their hand was just loaded, and I couldn't get through a toll booth any other way. So it was just my last ditch effort. But yeah, like I said, generally don't want to install the Faust if you can avoid it. So we have two Mimics. Uh, we're being assisted by Data Sucker here. So this is pretty good. This is, you know, kind of central to the, the reg build where it's just get things low enough that you're, you know, paying single credits for subroutines. Yeah. And, you know, like Mimic obviously is one of the best Sentry Breakers that we have in the game. If not, probably just the best. It can't break everything. Generally, without the without the help of Data Sucker, but it breaks most things that see a lot of play. Yep, we've got Yog coming back. Now, there's a thing with Yog where I hate paying the influence for it. Sometimes it's just great, though. Uh, you don't really have as many parasites as you used to have to get rid of things like, you know, pop up windows and all that stuff like that. So Yog can really pay itself off. I feel like Yogg, though, in the current meta, like, it's on the most wanted list, because obviously Yogg for a long time warped the idea of code gates. Right. But since then, they've made so many code gates that you look at Yogg really and you're like, strength. yeah, and you're like, what is this Yogg doing? Like, I have those matchups where I have Yogg, and they're like, oh, my code gates are Tollbooth and Archangel. And then it's like, oh, and I have a Ravana 1.0. And it's like, this Yogg just isn't cutting it. But I do want to have the copy of Yogg because sometimes it just is. Right. Against anybody who's like a rush, a rush uh, green build, the code gates, like, it just blanks the enigmas and the quandaries. It's just, I ignore them for the rest of the game. Yeah, you know, which is a good feeling. Like yeah. uh, the stupid <laughs> your Victor 1.0s and stuff that, that are just so annoying if you're using a real breaker for them that's not Yogg. Yeah. And just... Yeah, Enigma. Like I always say, like the most one of the most commonly played code gates in this game is Enigma, and it just turns it off. 
Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, again, talking about the weakness of a lot of these fixed-strength breakers, you've got two Davids backing everything up, which I feel like is a strong choice, and I... Have you changed the number at all? You think this is the right number? How's how does this come out for you in the game? Do you find yourself searching for it a lot? David is one of the best cards in Netrunner. I think uh, it's so important to have uh, access to. Like you know, if Max was a minimum fifty card deck, then yeah, I'd probably have three Davids. But it's hard to find deck slots, and with recursion, you can kind of reset your Davids a little bit. Not as much as like a Haley can do. But right. you can uh, you can reset your Davids a fair amount. So we have uh, two data suckers, which are is tied for my favorite card in Netrunner with Parasite. I, I hear they work well together too. I hear, so. I hear I hear they're pretty good. Yeah, data yeah. suckers obviously is just great. Like you're probably unless you're well, Timmy at Worlds last year, you're putting data suckers in your Anarch deck. Yeah. Or you know very specific decks. It, it's just such a powerful card. Right. And we've got. A singleton medium for the the late game close, I imagine? Uh, generally, yeah. Early game, you don't want to burn yourself out too much, just running medium a lot. Um, but with the idea of ice destruction and medium, we've seen this through all of these Anarch decks, so like the wizard deck. It's, it's a win condition so often. Medium is just such an unreason, unreasonably strong card. It's not unreasonably strong. It can be <laughs> purged, and you have to get into the server in order to get it. Anarchs get into servers I think, usually. <laughs> yeah, I think from a design... Well, I mean, in, in the time when it was designed, like medium from the design standpoint of how balanced it is as an individual card is just tremendous. You know, it gives you one token per run. It can be gotten rid of. It's three to put down. You know, like, it's... I don't know. It's an example to yeah. me of, like, the early design and how strong the early design was on some cards for the balance. It's just a incredible card yeah and it takes up an mu slot so you know like you have to have that plus your things to get you in the server right so we have three parasites my favorite card in netrunner um you know i noticed that a lot of these reg builds used to have two parasites and other stuff now there's a lot of three because i think just you gotta get certain things off the table like you gotta get some or get some of these things down to lower strength without using data sucker tokens yeah, um, at at regionals this last year, I had two parasites because I had an Otman, just you know, to try and get into the, the late game and stuff like that. Like Otman four can be so strong. Right. Um, but recently, I've I've cut that Otman. I've been you know, there's a lot of different ways you can go with the deck. But the thing is, parasite is so good, especially now when everybody started putting these taxing pieces of ice for uh, to deal with Faust. So it's a lot of these like low strength, high subroutine pieces of ice. Right, Parasite and parasites is, just is really answer. good against Hive. Yeah, and, it is really and, good. Against and Spiderweb and like all that, all those. And you're sad when you only have two parasites and you come across like a next ice deck. When you have Absolutely. three and you can just play them all the time, then uh, then that's amazing. Yeah. So that's the program suite. Uh, where do you want to go from here? Do you want to do what do you want to talk about next? Uh, we can just blow through these hardware really quick. Um, so we got two clone ships. Yep, obviously in a perfect world there would be three, but uh, it's we not a perfect, in a perfect world. world anymore. Yeah, I just want to talk really quick about the fact um, this deck is really just trying to trying to find a way to balance and keep this archetype going because it re it really like like a lot of powerful decks it really got wrecked by the most wanted list. Um, the standard like reg max deck lost like eight influence uh, between the clone ships and the yogs and the parasites, and so a lot of your consistency really got cut down on. And uh, having the difference between having two clone ships and three clone ships is huge, especially when you're also running a levy. Yes, yeah, like uh, you used to be able to play so many parasites and you know like recur imps and just do so much. And uh, now, now you have your two. You get so happy when you draw one. Yep. So we've got a two of turntable. It's pretty, pretty strong, I'd say. I think, other than noise, I can't imagine playing a console other than turntable in an Anarch deck right now. Uh, there's so many important agendas that, you know, like people are building their decks around agendas at this point. You know, like obviously Astroscript has always been, that's always been the, the, 
the dream swap. You know, you, yep. you love that. You love getting that Astro script. Uh, Nisei's uh, Atlas is a little rarer, but um, uh, but even just the fact that Global Food Initiative exists and is going to be around forever. It's also uh, worth noting that a turntable lets you take agendas back that are taken from you using exchange of information. Yeah, and that's such a big card to see nowadays. And those exchange of information decks also have a lot of small agendas to go with their big agendas. Yep. So yeah, turntable can really like I've just, where you know obviously there's these things where it's like oh you got your wild side pancakes early so that probably led to your win. Oh it's like oh that desperado having that desperado throughout the game getting all those credits helped lead to your win. It's like I've said that there's no card that like specifically you look at being like I won because of that card then turntable. Yeah. And then okay. when, when people also say certain things like, uh, oh, if you hadn't gotten that card, uh, you know, that was your win right there. I was like, yeah, if only you hadn't lost, you would have won. <laughs> yeah, it's like I put these cards in my deck for a reason <laughs> and I was drawing for it. So, uh, so yeah, so turn table, I have two copies because you want to see it and because MU can be an issue yeah. and you hate deja vuing for your console. Yeah, it's I mean, you'll do it if you have to, but it feels, feels it's, terrible. It does feel terrible. All right, it's like so a four, four cost double to play your turn table. <laughs> so. it's, it's really bad. So we've got three daily casts. It's good money, and you have to install a fair bit of stuff in this deck. So I click compression is important, I imagine. Money is extremely important in this deck. Like You need money to do anything, and you need to stay at a healthy amount of money. Because if you go too low, then it's really hard for you to bounce back. Yeah. So we got three KD Jones. So explain to me why there's three copies, because that's something that surprised me when I was looking through this list. Okay, now Katie is important for this deck because sometimes games do go long, and you need to have Come sustainable economy. You need yeah. you just need to have the sustainable economy. You have three to try and get her early, and obviously Max Mills cards. So you know what? Sometimes you just mill all of your Katie Jones. So she's a really important card in this deck, which is another reason why this deck sometimes can struggle, because now there's so much tag stuff so you have to watch out extra much but uh but yeah she's just you know what like people talk all the time about katie jones being a little slow but uh max's speed kind of makes up for it so it's like yeah loading katie jones isn't as bad when you're getting a free card to turn to right so we've got liberated accounts same thing it's good money it's strong anarch money now especially now that they don't have their early game money problems are not as much of an issue uh yeah. And that's another reason that I said that you need to keep up on money because you hate having that liberated accounts in your hand and having two credits. Yeah. So you generally want to be hovering around four or five at the very least. We've got three same old things because we're flipping cards. And yep. there's a lot of high quality events also, even if you end up holding the levy. There's a lot of high quality events in this deck. There is. I almost want to cut down to two same old things just because I only have two of the alt art ones. Oh, <laughs> but, but that's a... Uh, the only but thing, that's just a picky thing. So if you were... Well, let's talk about that briefly. If you were going to cut the same old thing, what would you put in its place, do you think? Um, probably some kind of event. Uh, but no, I, I, I would not actually... Now it, there was a time when I didn't have some of these cards, some of these events in my deck that I would have considered two same old things, but now there are more events in my deck. And so now I would... Seriously, on a serious level, I would never cut a same old thing. Yeah. Sometimes you also just need to have that to feel safe about your levy. That's also true. So going up to these events, we have three Deja Vu. Uh, I hear Deja Vu is really good in Anarch, like really good. It is. Um, if I was to cut a single card from this deck, it would probably be one copy of Deja Vu. Uh, that's, that's one good. of the things that I would consider cutting. Uh, obviously, sometimes it's like a more expensive special order for Max. Which right. can be which can be decent. Uh, it can get you two parasites. Uh, it can get you your medium back. You know, obviously, like there's a lot of things you can deja vu. Uh, but oftentimes, when you have three, you just have a couple sitting in your hand. Right. So uh, once we're done with this, we can kind of like talk about pos possible things that it could go in its place. I've been testing a lot of different options. So. Okay. So we've also got three I've had worse, which are pretty self-explanatory. It's it's good draw and it keeps you alive. Yeah, probably one of the best cards. Uh, it's great draw, and honestly, it's so weird playing this deck, playing Max with I've Had Worse as your damage protection, 
because it's really hard to balance because eventually your I've had worse gets turned off yep. until you have to levy and then you might not have it anymore. Right. So it's a really interesting game to play. So we've got a single knife. Sometimes, um, yeah, the cutlery can really help with certain problematic ice types for this type of build. Yeah, I mean, obviously, the main target for knifed is Eli. That's yeah. the that's the best thing to knife. Um, like, remember when the most wanted list came out, and we thought for a moment that maybe Eli wouldn't be like three copies in every deck. And then, it's still, th it's still and three then, copies. And yeah. then people are like, "Oh, now it's not. Now it's the best two influence splash in the game instead of just the best one." Yeah. Like so, yeah. Eli's still everywhere, so knife is good against that. It's also really good against like if Blue Sun reses the curtain wall, and they're yeah. just like, "Oh, I'll just bounce it back." It's like you know what? I'm just gonna I'm gonna bounce, and now I'm gonna break it. And a uh, hive is another good knife to target. Just those things that you don't want to run through over and over again. Yeah. As far as we've got a singleton legwork. This is a new addition to the deck. When I said I cut the Otman, I put in the third parasite and the legwork. And okay. honestly, this legwork has done so much work in testing. Like I said, the deck is less consistent now. And so sometimes you have to try to push to win a little earlier. And the legwork really helps. Legwork is one of the best cards that you can possibly have in any deck. Yeah. We've got a uh, single Levy AR lab access, which is when you're max, you will eventually mow yourself out. And if you don't have the Levy, that's basically gg -ville. Well, I would say... Again, when the deck was more consistent, I would only levy probably about like 30% of the time, like 30-35% of the time, depending on the matchup, because it is such a tempo hit. Uh, but now you find yourself having to levy really often to try and, you know, find those pieces again. Yeah. So, yep, so, but you always just have to levy, because sometimes you badly need it. Yep. We got a single tin Queen's Gambit for, I imagine, just some from zero economy. It is from zero economy. There's so many assets today. You know, out there that uh, it's hard to turn down like a lucky find <laughs> that right. you can that you can play at zero. Um, this is another slot that I would be open to turning into something else. Okay. But uh, but Queen's Gambit is a great card. It's it's a really nice card. So we have a retrieval run, which feeds into what we were discussing at the beginning of the video that Max uses her hand as or not her hand, her archives as an extension of her grip. This is a card that I would actually generally like to put in a second copy of. Uh, if I cut a Deja Vu, it would probably be for a Retrieval Run. Um, I didn't used to have Retrieval Run back when you had three clone ships. But uh, it turns out Retrieval Run's a really good card. Um, yeah. it, it feeds it like... Uh, important thing to note also, it's, it's a fun thing that can kind of happen, is you can Retrieval Run something and avoid the Cyberdex in Archives as, yeah. far as, as far as Data Sucker goes. So like... Uh, you can do fun tricks with Retrieval Run. I think my favorite one was Retrieval Running a Parasite, which also gave me the the last Data Sucker counter I needed to kill the thing that I just Parasited. Uh, yeah. So yeah, Retrieval Run's a great card. I kind of want to fit in a second one, maybe cut the Deja Vu for it. It gives you like positive return on some of your cards, or is just a break-even on others. Like, uh, in selling a Yogg with the Retrieval Run, it's great. Three-cost oh, yeah. three cost Yogg is great. But even a Corroder. If you really need your Corroder, I'll pay three for it. It's better than it's better than deja vuing it. So we've got spoon for some of those high strength code gates we were discussing earlier, like the archangel, the toll booth, things you really don't want to have to deal with more than once. Oh, it feels so good to just get rid of an archangel for one data sucker counter or for one David counter. Yeah. Uh. So yeah, that's what spoon is in there for. Because some of the and like I said, uh, lotus field stops you other than for Faust, and so even even with Faust, I wouldn't want to break a lotus field that that I wasn't spooning. And then we've got three sure gambles because sure gambles because, are pretty good. Because it's a netrunner deck. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's not a pawn shop deck, so it's, so it's got yeah. three sure gambles. So people watching at home, this is the deck. We're going to take it to competitive Jinteki, and we're going to see how we do. Steven, thank you very much for coming on the channel. Can you uh, remind everybody where they can find you? They can find me online. Uh, we are The Source. You can find us on iTunes. Go ahead and like and subscribe us. Uh, you can follow us at A&R The Source on Twitter. And, uh, and that's it. Yeah. We look forward to hearing from you. All right. Everybody listening at home and watching, until we see you again, always be running.